One of the most common operations in Photoshop is to create a collage of photos. This is known as compositing, adding one image to another. When considering doing this, you should start off by creating a canvas to place your images onto. So go to File, New. As we're working for the screen, we will set our dimensions to pixels. If you're working on a website, chances are that your dimensions will be up to a width of around 1000 pixels for a non-fluid layout. So we'll start with a width of 1000, and then for example a height of 800. Under pixels per inch, any work done for the screen should be set to 72. We'll then leave the background content to white. Click on OK. Now we have a canvas for our photos. So let's introduce some photos. Open up a set of photos that you have, and Photoshop will then open them all. Remember that in Photoshop you can drag on the tabs in order to pull those photos away. Now we have all of our various photos with our canvas underneath. I'm going to drag and drop all of these in. closing them as I do so. Remember that you can use the Move tool to composite, dragging from one file into another. The Move tool is the first one and can be accessed via the toolbar or using V on the keyboard. And close the document. Click and drag to composite and close the document. Click and drag to composite and close the document. Now we have four images as layers in our Photoshop document. We can disable them in the Layers panel, and then we'll see the background layer underneath. What we want to do is arrange them on our canvas. So let's start with our first one. Switch on the first layer and select that layer in the Layers panel. Then use Command T, or if you're on a PC, Control T, to enter Free Transform Mode. This will give you handles around your image. You always want to keep things in proportion, so hold down Shift and then drag one of the corners. Always making sure that you let go of the mouse before letting go of Shift. I'm then going to place my image into one corner. Notice that Photoshop will snap to any particular edge. And then I'm going to hold down Shift again and reduce the size of this. Something like that. I'm going to either press return on the keyboard or click the tick at the top of the interface to confirm. Now let's grab layer number two and enable it by clicking the checkbox to the left. You should then see an eye icon to show that it's there. Command T to enter free transform and drag until you can see a corner handle. Remember that if you want to, you can always zoom out to see more easily. You can do this by using command and minus or control minus on PC. Then hold down Shift and drag a corner. And for now, I'm going to leave these layers touching one another. Press Return to confirm. We'll zoom back to 100%. Remember to make sure that you're seeing a true representation of your image, look at the percentage number next to the title of your document in its tab at the top. When viewing at 100%, this is the actual size of your image. Then I'm going to switch on my next layer, making sure that I select it, of course. I'm going to zoom out and Command T to enter free transform. Now I have an awkward space to work with. So what am I going to do? Well, what I can do is simply to size it to the rough width that I want to keep, scale it down, and put it in the right place. But now the bottom is overlapping. So that's what I want from that photo. So I'm going to confirm at the top. But now I'm simply going to reorder the layers. So I'm going to place layer number three underneath layer number one, which means that that photo will appear over the top. So remember that the layers are a hierarchy order. The ones at the top will appear in front of the ones beneath them. I'm going to switch on my final layer, layer number four, and select it. And what I'm going to do now is drag that to the bottom because I know I've got one piece of space left. And then I can simply drag around to position where I want. Now I have my images of San Francisco. I can place these into a group. So I'm going to hold down Shift and click on the top layer to select all of them. 
and I'm going to drag them down onto the folder icon at the bottom to place them into a group. I'm going to name my group Photo Originals and I'm going to consider this a backup. What we're about to do is to flatten these layers into one so that we can cut away some lines in between the photos. So I'm going to back up this group first. I'm going to do this by dragging and dropping the group onto the Duplicate or New button at the bottom. This is the second from right. Now we have a copy. To remember which one is the original, I'm going to select Originals and switch it off by clicking on the eye icon. Then I'll reselect my Photo Originals copy, right click and select Merge Group. This will turn the group into a single flattened layer. Now I can simply use my Marquee tool to cut into it. So select the Marquee tool, press M on the keyboard or the second on the toolbar, and we're going to fix the size. Under Style, choose Fixed Size. We'll set a width of 1000, as we know that's the size of our canvas, and we'll set a height. Of five. This means when I click on the canvas, I get a very precise number of pixels, and I'm going to place that overlapping where my pictures connect. I'm using the arrow keys to move the marquee down one pixel at a time. Then I'm going to simply press backspace on the keyboard to delete and deselect. Now I want to separate the other images, so I'm going to set my style back to normal. This time I'm going to use the info panel to make sure that I use a width of 5. So click on Window Info and then drag from where the photos are joined together. As long as I get the cursor within the white line that I've already established horizontally, I can always move the marquee selection that I've made before I press Delete. Now you can see in the Info panel, we don't get pixel representations. So to fix this, I'm going to go to Photoshop, Preferences, Units and Rulers, and I'm going to set all of my settings to pixels and click on OK. Now you can see that I've made a selection of width 7. To remake your selection, click away from the marquee selection you've made. Then drag down again. It doesn't matter if you're doing it over the join, remember you can move the marquee later and just drag so that the cursor is over the separation. Now I've got a width of 5 as I can see in the info panel, I'm going to let go. And you can see I've got a width of 5 and a height of 405 which is fine. But my selection is not over the join, so I'm going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move it until it overlaps. Remember you can check by zooming in. Hold space to pan around when dragging, and having made sure that we've got that over the join, I can now simply hit backspace, and then go to select, deselect. I'll do this one more time, dragging down until I have a width of 5. Now I can see I've let go with a width of 4 by mistake, so I'm simply going to press backspace to clear, and now I know I need one more pixel, so I'm going to press the right arrow key once to move one pixel to the right, and press backspace once more. Now I know that I have exactly 5 pixels gap in between, and I can deselect. Now before we export this image, we're going to simply add a bit of sharpening. Because we've reduced the size of the images used in our collage, they will have lost a little clarity. So go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. This is a sharpen function that gives you some control over the sharpening level. You can see that the preview box is checked by default. So if we set it to a percentage of around 70%, and uncheck and recheck preview, you can see that the actual images themselves will be nicely sharpened. Click on OK to confirm. Then we're going to export for the web, so go to File, Save for Web. Ensure that the file type is JPEG at the top. And then set the quality to zero. We're using the two up view at the top. This means that you can see the original file that we're working on on the left and the JPEG we're exporting to the right. At zero quality, it looks really bad. You can see a lot of artifacting, of course. But we want to improve this until we cannot ascertain a difference between the original and the JPEG that we're exporting. So click to the right of the quality value to show the slider, and then drag this one click at a time so that the preview updates until you can't see a difference between the two anymore. 
For my image, this looks right at around 50 to 60%. However, the contents of an image will completely define how much quality you need in order to export them. Now I can see that my original file has been compressed from around 2.3 meg to 261 KB. And you can see beneath this, we can set this to different profiles of internet connection to see how long they'd need to be downloaded. This dialog also lets you set the size for the exported image under image size. So if you wanted something smaller than a width of a thousand, you can do this. And Photoshop defaults to constraining the image for you. So simply set one dimension to also set the other. Click save and name the image. Thanks for watching.